Our tax receiver sent out, um, prepared the taxes for the, we received for our town and the county taxes, um, went out in plenty of time. Residents should have received their town and county taxes. Um, we became aware, and it's not only here in the town of uh, Stony Point, we spoke with the uh, supervisor Howard Phillips in the town of Havistore. Um, we haven't narrowed it down if it's through the post office, but became, we became aware that uh, some of our residents have not received their town and county tax bill. Um, we put the information out on our, our website, we put uh, social media. I also had last week a reverse 911 call go out to our residents so they are aware if they have not received their tax bill, they can stop by tax uh, town hall and get a copy of the bill. They can call the receiver of taxes. Um, they can email and we'll have to, because the taxes are due on January 31st, the tax receiver will be staying uh, open late that evening till 7 p.m. Um, I'm also um, reached out to representatives of the uh, Champaign uh, Hudson Power Express Line. We're looking to get a net, another public forum. We'd like to have that right here. So we know that when this project starts, it's going to uh, be a big impact here in on our 9W corridor. Um, the initial plan that is still, everything's still in flux, um, will start in Clarkstown. I, we always were under the impression that it would begin in Tompkins Cove and go south. Um, the latest meeting I had with Champaign and, and also uh, the mayors and the representatives of North Rockland both Rob Lamilia and Mike Koha, we were informed that they will start in Clarkstown and head north. Um, the, it seems like the date when they start still gets pushed back. So we've been pushing for a, a meeting, another public meeting where residents can come, ask questions, and, and learn more about it and their concerns. They also uh, are looking for uh, a an office here in either Stony Point or Havistore um, where they'll have a representative from the Champaign Hudson Power Express Line um, on business hours where residents will be able to go there, ask questions and, and concerns. So as soon as we have a date on that, we'll put that out on our website, our social media, and, and uh, of course of the location of uh, where the storefront is going to happen. Uh, and finally, coming up, is the 25th year that the Stony Point Seals are doing their fundraising. This year, they're raising funds for two local children, Elijah Torres and Caden Jermosin. Uh, just this past Saturday, the Stony Point Seals had a uh, kickoff event here at Patriot Hills. They had over 250 people. Um, this is a, a wonderful event. We have to commend, as always, the, the Stony Point Seals. For 25 years, they've been raising funds and, and making a difference in families' lives. I know um, the chief has a meeting prior to the plunge, because there's, there's a lot that goes into that um, with uh, all our first responders, the divers, the Wayne Hose Fire Department, the sheriffs, the state police, um, at buses, have a short transit, so we always have a safety meeting before that, that'll be coming up, but just invite everybody, uh, Super Bowl Sunday, February 11th, they, they start their uh, fundraising early, they're, they're down there at 10 o'clock, normally the plungers go in around 12, 30, 1 o'clock, that's the timeline. Okay, uh, thank you, and that's all I have for our report. Uh, at this time, we have one person signed up for public input, Mr. George Katanovic Jr. Uh, I'd like to invite up, him up for public input. Thank you, Supervisor, and members of the board, members of the public. Uh, my name is George Katanovic. I live at 597 Old Road and president of space. 
Um, first, uh, I have a, a question for you. At the last meeting, Supervisor, uh, two weeks ago, you had mentioned that um, you're planning to have a, a public hearing at the next meeting, two weeks from now, on uh, chapter, what's called chapter 215 of our town zoning code, which for people who don't know, uh, includes the uh, business district along Route 9W, including the 111 South Liberty property, which was uh, under review this past year. Um, I asked for a copy of that but through Freedom of Information request and was told that it's not available yet. Uh, I'm asking uh, to say when will it be available and what's the purpose of the uh, zoning amendments, if you can say what is the purpose for you making amendments to that particular part of the zoning code. Um, okay. You don't want to say that? Okay. Um, okay. The, um, okay. So I'm, I'm also I'd like to ask in the, in the, in the, in the, in the menu in the uh, agenda today you have a resolution of authorizing legal services by special counsel uh, in litigation. Can you tell us what uh, litigation that, that refers to? And um, lastly, I'd like to say I'm glad to hear that the town now is, is planning to do a public meeting on the Champlain Hudson Power Express. This is a, a big project space, has supported the idea of having a, uh, I won't call it another public meeting because I don't believe they ever had a public meeting. They had what they called an open house, which they advertised literally three days before in the newspaper, like a Thursday for a Monday meeting it was ridiculous. I called them up and told them that, and we should have something better. So I'm glad to see that you're able to uh, work with them to, for the residents of the town, to have a better idea of the schedule and what the plan is for that project, which is, for people who don't know, it's not a a few week project. It's, a three, it's supposed to be a three year project according to what I read about it. Uh, but it's in what's called section 12. And section 12 is where it comes out of the, where it comes out of the water up in Tompkins Cove, up at the uh, Lovett site or near the Lovett site into 9W and will travel under 9W through our business district uh, and then through West Havistraw and then through Congress and then back into the river again. So it's a sizable project. And, I think it's important that all three communities have a meeting so that we can get the big picture and then people, as the supervisor was mentioning, maybe have a chance for individual property owners who might have specific questions about their property to be able to ask questions. But I think it's important for us to get the bigger picture of what's being planned because this is a big project. It's going to impact our business district one way or the other, uh, hopefully you know, less than more. And uh, also the residents in the town want to know, I think, what the plan is um, so we can plan around that as well or what's our business district what's going to happen to our business district during that time and then i think the other part of that that i think the board should be looking at since we are going to be getting some money from the champlain hudson power express is we should be talking about what do we want our nw corridor to be like in the future you know what, what are the things that we want to change you know how can we make improvements it's not just a matter i think of paving the road but what can we do to further enhance our business district thinking ahead. And we really haven't had that discussion. It's really a discussion that should be part of a master plan discussion for that property. I don't know if the zoning that you're talking about changing for, for section 215 has anything to do with chipping or if there's some other reason for doing it. That's why I'm Thanks. asking what the purpose was. Thanks, George. I'll answer a couple of questions. Yeah, okay, I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we, we are having a public hearing on February 13 concerning uh, code for the BU district. Um, that as soon as that's completed, I'm hoping possibly as early as next week that that'll be available. Once it's available, we'll put it out on the town website, and you can get a copy of the clerk's office. Um, as we as we always do here, we always look at our our town codes and and different things. And uh, I'm not going to comment specifically on this because it's still being reviewed. But always, uh, this board's intention is always um, to to have uh, comprehensive codes that I always look for, as I'd say, to preserve and protect the, the tranquility and the beauty of Sony Point. So that's something uh, this this board uh, 
really has, as we've upgraded our, our town code when we went during COVID, there's just so many uh, changes that we did. Uh, river and rail, brownfield development is one. It's just, so um, what I like to say is take action. You know, don't wait five, 10 years. We're in office now, take action for, for uh, things that should be done. Um, and Chippy is, that's Chippy who's proposing it. If it was the town, we have it today. We're, we've been pushing them. I thought we were gonna have a date uh, early next month, but I couldn't lock them into that date. So we'll keep, like I said, we'll be on the website. We'll get that information out, so thank you. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing to amend chapter 77. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. <coughs> so the state building codes uh, has made changes and we are looking to um, update the code to be consistent with the state's uh, code. Um, that's the purpose of uh, the amending to chapter 77. Is there anybody here who would like to comment on that? I would, but could you explain a little bit about it, Jim, as to what the purpose of it is? I, I kind of simple purpose. The state comes down, they, they may have different wording, they may, I'll give you an example. Um, we've never had uh, inspect parking garages. In the state code, they have that the municipality should have in their code to inspect parking garages. Now, we don't have parking garages here. It's more towards uh, a building code, thing, but it could in the future. So those are things that we're reviewing. You, you know, a town code does not have to be word for word with the state code. You can have uh, separate um, guidelines, but the effort of this is to be more consistent in the wording with the state code. I understand. Is there anybody else who would like to speak on it? George? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I'm uh, George Katanovic, 597 Old Gate Hill Road, and President of Space. Um, so, I have a couple of points. It's a big document, 25 pages almost uh, uh, of information to go through. Um, but I saw what it was, it basically identifies, I think, the building inspector, the code officer's responsibility in different situations, that's what it seemed like to me, I don't know if I'm wrong about that. Um, but um, I just bring your attention to a couple of places where I had questions, not necessarily comments, but on page uh, 5, um, which is under 77-4B, building permits, uh, B talks about exemptions, no building permits shall be required for work in any of the following categories, and it lists a number of different examples, uh, eight or so different examples. Um, in uh, section, in, in part one, under B, B1, it says no, no uh, permit shall be required under the construction or installation of a one-story detached structure associated with a one or two family dwelling or multiple single family dwellings at townhouses which are used for oh, for tool sheds and, and storage sheds. So that's not an actual residential property, that's just for tool sheds. Okay. Correct. You put a shed. You don't need a, a permit for a shed, basically. Right? And they said as long as there's like, no electricity associated with it, so no electricity. Okay, I understand. Um, also, um, page eight, uh, which is J under that section now. Uh, section, what is it? Section, it's J on page 8. Anyway. Um, it says timing. This building permit shall become invalid unless the authorized work is commenced within six months following the date of issuance, and the building permit shall expire 24 months uh, after the date of issuance. So, how is, how is that a change from how it is now? I always thought it was five years. Once you came to the planning board, you went through the whole process. I thought you had five years to actually build what you were saying you were going to build. I didn't even know what the time was that you were required within six months to start it. Is that the same as it is now, or is that a change from what it had been? 
that would be no. a change. Do you want it to change or you don't? Well, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm assuming it's less time. You're giving the you're giving the contractors less time. More, uh, they have to start sooner uh, after the approval. Basically, is that what it is? It's a it's a a, t a tighter time frame to begin. And so, so if if this if that was adopted, right? That would that would uh, yeah, you come for a building permit, and as it reads. Uh, unless the authorized work is commenced within six months from the issuance, um, that wouldn't be so. So that still wouldn't be because you know, George, things take years before they go before the plan. Right. It's when the final approval is given. That would be yeah. Once they issue the. Permit. So you have six months basically to have your financing in, in line or whatever it is that you need to start building. If that was months. adopted. If that was adopted. So do you think that? I don't. Do you think that's a good idea or not? I don't want what I think. I don't, I don't yeah, I don't know if that's reasonable or not. It's, it sounds good to be quicker, but I don't know. I don't know if that's. So, would you recommend that be longer? No, not necessarily. I just wanted to know how it compared to how it is today. I'm not really hearing uh, what it is today. I guess. Yeah. I don't think it's. I think it's longer today. If I know, that you know. Yeah. Uh, so and the 24 you, months. For the purpose of public, I, yeah. I, I, I value your opinion. No. Right. Well, well, are you? Good with that or? Yeah, I'm good with it. I just I was asking the question was whether or not how it compares to how it is today, okay. and I don't hear the answer to that yeah. necessarily. Well, I, I kind of see like Dunkin' Donuts. Is right. Okay, but go ahead. Yeah, well, Dunkin' Donuts got approved, right, and they didn't have to actually start building within six months, which I think it was longer than that, but. Yeah, a lot of that. So you're saying that Duncan Douglas would have had to build. I'm not saying that. That's, that's what the that's what the proposal is. Yeah. So that's why I just wanted to bring your attention to that. Okay. Now the other one was on page nine, um, at the bottom, number eleven, or after number C on, on page nine, uh, remote inspections. And I know you're given the what they call a code enforcement officer, which I assume is the building inspector, um, the right to make the decision, but. Remote inspection would be about putting a camera on something and showing showing the building inspector through a camera what something looks like. It doesn't seem reasonable to me. They show what you want to show and not show what you don't want to show. I mean, it seems like you wouldn't do that unless there was some unusual situation to do remote inspections, especially in a town small as ours, right? There's yeah, no problem. I, I, I don't see us using it. I don't see us using it, okay. Um, like I said, a lot of these are, you know, came down from, from the state. state. Yeah, I understand. You know, they, I guess they were, I don't know if it was due to COVID or what their reasoning was. Yeah. And on page 14, um, with, which J, chapter 56, it talks about explosives and fireworks. Not that I chew up the fireworks, but I thought they were somewhat legal in New York now. And it's saying under this one that basically the only thing that's really legitimate without a permit is the sparklers. Well, people, don't they sell fireworks now in stores where people can go out and shoot them off and pull the joy in the sand? Please which, 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 which line? That's on uh, number four, page number 14J in the red. Yeah, so it says explosives and fireworks. Possessing, manufacturing, storing, handling, selling, using explosives and fireworks or other pyrotechnic special effects materials except in the outdoor using sparklers. That was the only one that basically they're saying doesn't require a permit. And it seems to me the law right now, the way I understand it, I see them being sold in the stores. So people have, if they're selling them, I'm assuming they're legal. They're not explosive, they're flowering, they're sparkling. Oh, okay. uh, they can't be like any. I mean, it's right. Like so this, okay, so it's not just sparklers either, though, I'm just saying, and, and that's what it says here, Chief. Yeah. Um, so in case you know, you wanted to distinguish between that, uh, I thought it was legal in New York the way it is now. Uh, and then open burning. Open burning is not just having a little stove in your backyard, but you can't have any of that. It's, what, what is the purpose of the outdoor burn, open, open burning recreational fires or portable outdoor fireplaces? I'm assuming a fireplace or a, something for cooking, I guess, is, is legitimate. But I guess we're talking about what? Not having open <coughs> fires outside. I don't know. Not that it affects me personally that much. Um, okay. Okay, the other ones that started. Okay, I think that was it. Um, okay, thank did you. Did you have any other? Um, I'd like to hear the board's opinion on anything that's in there. Do you think? Yeah. You, yeah. you don't have any opinion? We're gonna. We actually gonna keep the public hearing open. Okay. You know, opinion. We want to hear the purpose of the public hearing is to hear from. And then I, I, I don't want to have a set opinion. Right. I want to listen to if somebody yeah. comes in and says, supervisor, I think this. 
it would be a good idea when they explain it. That's what that's that's, that's what the purpose here. So so well, like, so I can understand now if the state's telling you this is their guidelines, you have the ability to make them different for the town, right? So you don't have to follow this exactly. You can make it tighter or looser than what it is or either way. To some point, yes. To some point. So you don't have to get permits for things that you don't need to get permits for sometimes, right? Things like that. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Joe. Is there anybody else like to speak? Okay. I just want to clarify for Mr. Connick's benefit. Um, the statute here doesn't say sparkler. It is a sparkling device. It's a defined term in the penal law. It goes beyond sparklers. It's a list of devices called sparkling devices. So <laughs> those are the things that the chief was talking about. They all fall under that definition. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you, Council. Right. Appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to make a motion to continue the public hearing uh, for our next town board meeting, which I believe is February 13th, 7 p.m. here in this building. I'll okay. mm -hmm. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. I'll make a motion uh, authorizing uh, legal services by special town council in litigation. And this is for an Article 78 that was filed on 111 uh, Liberty Drive. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries.